What's good everybody, my name is Mateo Toro, I'm a run and gun filmmaker based out of Reading, Pennsylvania and in this video I'm going to review the Siri 50mm full frame anamorphic lens. Before I start the review, let me just play you some footage that I've shot using this lens for the past few weeks. <laughs> I'm actually using the Surrey 50mm full frame anamorphic lens to film this review. I have it on my Sony FX6, so I'm using the heat mount, and that's the one that I've been using the last few weeks. First off, I really have to say that I was a bit hesitant at first to use this lens for a major campaign that I had been filming for the past few weeks because when I first saw the reviews, I was just a little bit thrown off by the crazy flare that was coming off from the lens, and that was from the pre-production models. There was like this little ghost blue flare under the main flare and I just thought it was a bit distracting and I didn't think it would fit this campaign. And secondly, I had tested out the Siri APS-C anamorphic lens kit, which was a 24mm, the 35mm, and I believe the 75mm. And I just really wasn't impressed by those lenses. I think it has to do with the fact that the squeeze factor was only 1.33x and it was also for APS-C, so you just didn't have that depth of field that I was really looking for to make my image just pop something that is really really common with anamorphic lenses but I have to say after a few weeks of filming with this lens shot so many different types of videos I shot corporate video I've been shooting like a mini doc and a non-profit campaign this lens has just absolutely blown me away in the images that it produces to give context how I've used this lens for the past few weeks obviously as a solo running gun filmmaker I've been pulling focus on my own I've been um, composing my images and I've just been the camera operator just making sure everything is on point and then also I had the chance to use it as a director so my friend was actually the camera operator and the director of photography and everything that I produced the last few weeks was also on the Sony FX6. Real quickly since the squeeze factor is 1.6x it's not a very common squeeze factor that you can find in many monitors so what we used to be able to de-squeeze the image and compose our images while we were filming was my Adam of Shinobi 7 inch and I just used the 1.5x de-squeeze uh, factor that it has built into that monitor. My first impressions right off the bat after filming so many different type of videos for the last few weeks with only this lens is the fact that it just really does have that anamorphic look. I think the squeeze factor definitely plays a role in it, the full frame factor definitely plays a role in it, but it just has a super, super sharp image, which I personally love. It just pops um, when you're grading it and, and you're looking at that final image. Um, the characteristics of the bokeh and that tall oval look in the background is just really, really nice. I really think it just sells you on the anamorphic look. And to me, what really stands out, what's most important to me as a cinematographer is the quality of the image. The contrast and the way it renders colors just really has that wow pop factor that you really want to get from anamorphic and that's what has really sold me in the last few weeks. I have to say, I truly fell in love with this lens. I think the fact that it's full frame and it's 50 millimeter and you're getting that focal length, but also since you have that 1.x6 squeeze factor, you have this almost 30 millimeter field of view. So when we were filming this mini doc, for example, of this, of this lady Beth, she's a retired nurse, she was an RN, she had a tragic um, disease, kind of amputate both her arms and one of her legs. And she's still doing CrossFit five times a week now, um, many years later from her incident. And she, we were able to just really compose these images that can tell you the full story in our frames, whether it was her working out using a squat rack, whether it was her just doing daily things like um, watering the leaves or her plants or making coffee. We were able to just really fill in the frame since it has this wide field of view, but still give you that compression that a 50 millimeter focal length would really give you. Another thing as a camera operator, the focus rings are pretty smooth. I don't think that they're too tight and you can definitely use a small follow focus. I, we were using a Tilta mini follow focus on it and we had no issues at all. However, they're also smooth enough that if you are a solo operator or a solo filmmaker, you can easily just pull focus manually while you're holding the lens handheld, which I did plenty of times on my FX6. The close focus distance definitely wasn't the best. I think it's about two and a half feet from the reviews I saw online, but there's easily a way to get around this. You can just buy some very affordable diopters. I bought mine from B&H from Vivitar. I think they were like a set of four for $15. And again, having that squeeze factor and putting on diopter allowed me to get close up of her hands when she's watering the leaves, um, when she's working out. Uh, 
or even when we were doing the interview and I wanted to get just a different kind of POV when she was really selling us on the last part of the interview and I knew the emotional part, the closer part for the video I was filming was gonna be around that time frame of the interview. So having that close focus with that adopter, but still having that the anamorphic look, I think it just really, to me, me and my friend, we were filming in live view, we're just like blown away. Uh, I think it's something that is truly uh, really impressive, again, considering the price of this lens. Talking about the flares, again, when I looked at the reviews online from Brandon Lee and a couple others from the pre-production models, I just really was a bit worried about using or buying this lens because of that little ghost blue flare. But honestly, it looks like they should really fix the coating on the lens. The flares are very much more controlled. If you have a matte box, you're not gonna have any issue at all. And they really are only very pronounced and deep if you just point directly at a hot uh, light source like the hot sun when we were doing shooting the day or when we were pointing it at a aperture 200d with barn doors directly into the to the lens but that was also a, um, a intentional decision we wanted to get that flare so we went for that look and pointed it directly at the at the light so i think if you're worried about the flare i think they've definitely fixed it at least in the model that i was able to use um, and, it, and, it, and it does have that anamorphic look. It's pretty cool. I mean, I just watched Batman last night and they shot that on anamorphic and anamorphic just has this look that you obviously just want some flares and this one has some really nice flares and they're pretty controlled, especially if you're using a matte box. The only con that I can say that I found from using this lens the last few weeks is that this lens is just a bit warm on the Kelvin side. If you're filming outdoors, obviously I like to use 5600 Kelvin when filming outdoors. Uh, I was I was using like 4600 Kelvin because it seemed like this lens was just producing some very very warm images So I wanted to cool down in camera. So when I go on post, I don't have this super warm image So I will say be uh, mindful of your white balance having that this is very warm It makes it pretty difficult to film in a very um, in a setting or a room that has maybe a lot of tungsten lights And you want to bring your white balance down to 3200 so you have a clean whites I don't know you're gonna have to figure it out or play around with the lights that you have um, especially if you're running and gunning, that's a bit difficult, but other than that, uh, that's probably like the only con that I was able to really come up with after using this lens for a few weeks. Weight-wise, I think it's a it's a, something that maybe a lot of people are considering when they're buying a full-frame anamorphic lens. Um, this one is about like, I don't know, 1.2 kilos. It's almost the same weight as my Sony 2470 G Master, so I personally have no issues at all, especially when I was using a handheld and I had like my Atomo 7-inch monitor with two batteries, and I'm on the FX6. It gets pretty heavy. Uh, but again, it's a comfortable weight that I'm used to since my G Master is almost about the same weight So to me, I think the weight obviously helps you when you're getting handheld and you want to just keep your foot pretty stable The lens doesn't have internal stabilization. In conclusion, would I recommend the Siri 50 millimeter full-frame anamorphic lens? I think it's a no-brainer even just looking at the footage that I was able to show you in the beginning of the video The quality of the image is just exceptional. The colors that it renders are really great has a really great contrast to it as well and it's very sharp, so you can easily just throw the fusion filter. So having that that pop 3D effect that I personally have always admired from anamorphic lenses when I see them on movies or short films or even just on YouTube videos, this definitely has all those characteristics, especially with the, the, the oval bokeh. I think this is the most affordable full frame anamorphic lens you can even consider because the only ones that I can find that are even relatively close to this price are the Vazen line, and they start at $8,000. So we're looking at you know, almost a $6,000 difference. You can buy FX6 for $6,000. So I think once Siri releases their full set, hopefully they throw a 35 millimeter in there, or maybe like a 90 or 75 millimeter in there, I will definitely pick up um, this set because it's just an exceptionally well-built um, lens. And if they go with the same kind of weight and size of lenses and the focus rings and the aperture rings are pretty consistent, so you can use the same follow focus positioning, I'm all in. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Um, Siri, you outdid yourself for independent filmmakers, so running gun filmmakers, people who just don't want to spend 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars on an anamorphic lens. That's really out of reach for most filmmakers, especially if you're not like a giant production company or rental house. I think this is just the way to go. I'm really pleased. I uh, really, really love the images that I was able to capture. So appreciate everyone watching. I'll have this lens linked in the description box below if you want to pick it up with my affiliate link. I just get a small kickback and no extra charge to you for using my affiliate link. And again, leave any questions you have about how to use this lens, the image it produces, all in the comment section below. I'll see everyone in the next video. Peace.